I am having like a fantabulous hair day and I don't know how to feel about it. Look at those bangs. She's grace, she's beauty. I'm done now. Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with my March book haul. Another month, another book haul. We know the drill on this channel. I buy a lot of books. It's a thing that I do. Hello, have you met me? Um, so same as the last months, I've quite a substantial stack here. Um, but a lot of these are books that I have been wanting to get for a while and I just have been putting off and then this is the month that I did that. A couple of pre-orders came in this month, so we had quite a few books show up more than I anticipated. But let's just get right into it. You guys know what book hauls are by now, so let's just talk about some books that I picked up that I'm super excited about, and we'll say that many times during this video. The first couple I picked up are mangas that I'm trying out. I'm really gotten into mangas in the last like month or two. I haven't read that many as you would have seen in my wrap up, but I have purchased quite a few, including at the beginning of April. But I'm just like buying a lot of like first volumes to see if that's something that I would be interested in. And these two books that I'm going to show you are both books that I picked up based on Liv from Liv's Library's recommendation. But I saw both of these in a video she posted relatively earlier on in the month and I was like, those sound interesting, I'm gonna try them. But the first one is the first volume of Spy Family by Tatsuya Endo. This is a series, from what I can understand, that follows our main character who is a spy. Um, his name is Twilight and he has been set on this mission in which he needs to create a fake family, he needs to get a wife, he needs to get a kid, and so he does that. He picks up a wife, um, he finds a kid from an orphanage, and they kind of create this really bizarre family, but I think they actually like do start caring for each other. The girls always wanted a family and this is a super bizarre one, but it's one that like she actually cares about the people, the people actually care about her. So I think it's just to start off as like a mission and then it turns into these people caring about each other. That is my um, interpretation, but on the back here it says that he's a spy the wife is an assassin and that the kid is a telepath. So like maybe they all get part, become part of this mission. I have no idea. Um, but this looks like one that just was, sounded super interesting. It sounded super bizarre, but it was something that I just kept thinking about and was something that I was like, I want to try that out. So I grabbed the first volume to give it a shot. So the next one is another first volume, like I said, that I saw on Liv's channel. Um, and this one, she kind of phrased as a really good starting off point for people who want to read more manga and while I have had some experience with manga I'm still very much a beginner so I thought this sounded interesting and wanted to give it a shot and that is the first volume of Witch Hat Atelier by Kamome Kamome Shirakama um, but this basically follows our main character, Coco, who lives in this world where witches are supposed to have been born with magic. You can't really learn magic. And she one day sees a witch, it sounds like using magic in a way that like she assumes, oh, it's actually something that I can learn. And so she tries to teach herself and it doesn't end so well. And she goes on an adventure and I'm feeling, because the wizard or the witch is on the back here. And I feel like he's going to become a major part of this story where she'll like maybe go to him to get some experience, that kind of stuff. Um, but this, this, this cover is stunning. And I think the art inside is really pretty as well. It's all black and white. Same with Spy Family. The art inside is black and white. Um, but I'm really curious about this one. So I decided to give this one a shot as well. I'm excited to try these out. Maybe we'll sneak one in here and there somewhere. So the next few are just some of the pre-orders that I've had that have finally come in. Um, one of them, this next one came out at the beginning of February and just took a while to get to me. And it finally did. Uh, and that is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. I talked about this in so many videos. This was in my books that I pre-ordered slash anticipated releases of the year. I'm re planning on reading this in April, so you would have seen this in my April TBR. Uh, but this follows a girl named Grace who has just completed her PhD, but is kind of like stuck 
doesn't really know what she wants, doesn't really want to continue with academics, and so she takes a girl's trip with some of her friends to Vegas and ends up waking up married to another woman. And so she decides to kind of like take a break from all of her academics that she's done and go to New York City with her now wife and kind of get to know her a little bit more. Uh, so it sounds like so much fun. I know this like getting married in Vegas and then eventually falling in love is like a thing that's happened. I've seen like movies made about it, but I've never seen it in this instance where like the couple or like at least one person in the couple is like I want to give this a shot and see what it's like um and so I'm just this sounds amazing uh it sounds like it's gonna be a super fun romance this cover is stunning it's also a debut novel it's the first thing that Morgan Rogers has ever written and uh, it just sounds incredible so I'm really excited to give this debut an author a try I'll be reading this in uh April so I'm like oh, I'm very excited about it I had to like stop myself from dropping everything to read this when it showed up in the mail because like I, oh, I wanted to read it so bad. The next one is actually a book that came out at the beginning of in the beginning of the year so sometime in January but there's a whole issue with because I got it through a company that like you can get it signed and personalized which is what I wanted um, and there's just a whole issue with the shipping. It got damaged. They didn't want to send a damaged copy, which I completely understand. So they had to get it re-signed again, um, which is fine. I did not mind waiting on it. I really appreciate the company doing that. But that is Lore by Alexander Bracken. I have loved Alexander Bracken's stuff in the past. I read her entire Darkest Minds series. And this is a standalone fantasy that revolves around Greek mythology. If you couldn't tell by like the, to me, very obvious Greek looking cover, but it is signed and personalized, which is just super cool. But this book follows our main character, Lore, in this world where there are what they call, I think it's called Aegon. Yeah, it's like, a battle that happens every five years where like the gods become mortal and so then mortals can like fight to become gods for a few years and Laura lost her family to this game and so she's decided to like step back but then a childhood best friend and Athena both come to her to basically be like please help us out during this time because we're going against the god who killed your family and I know you've had this like revenge thing plus you're good help us out and so she decides to uh I think she decides to go ahead and try it out. I've heard very mixed things about this, but because I do like Greek mythology and because I have liked her writing in the past and her storytelling, um, I'm really excited to give it a shot. I think there's probably going to be a lot of Greek mythology callbacks throughout this that I think are going to be super interesting. Um, but yeah, I really, this cover is stunning. Um, I'm very excited about this and it's super heavy, but, uh, yeah, it finally came in and, uh, who knows when I'm gonna read this. I tried to fit it in, in my April TBR and it did not work so well. So, uh, maybe, maybe this summer sometime, but, uh, Greek mythology, standalone. Sounds like my thing. And then the last kind of pre-order I think that came in this month came with that one because I bought it together and this one actually came out at the end of last year and I just because I bought them together it waited until this one came which is fine because I'm not planning on reading this until the fall anyway and that is The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Daniel Page. I'm very bitter. I haven't been able to get this sticker off yet. It comes off which is nice. I just haven't been able to figure it out. Uh, so that's fun. Um, but this one is also signed and personalized by both of the, ooh, by both of the authors, which is cool. This sounds really interesting because it's like a fantastical contemporary story because it follows this girl who's on a college campus um, and she is, I think, apply it's been a while since I read the synopsis. She's applying or trying to get in the sorority, but the sorority is only letting in people who are witches and have like these powers. Um, and I'm sure lots more things happen and like our main character doesn't know that she's a witch and then she gets part of this, tr like this part of this, um, society and then becomes a witch. It's like a whole thing. But that seems very like fall, october -y vibes to me. But, uh, it just sounds interesting. Uh, and like I said, I don't know that much about it. So like definitely go check out the synopsis if this sounds interesting to you because I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it. But it's basically witches on a college campus. I've never read a book where like it's a contemporary time which includes witches so I am very excited about this it sounds like it's gonna be great and I will for sure be reading this in the fall sometime okay so the, basically the next big chunk um, are all books that I bought because I liked the UK covers 
that's my explanation. Um, and I'm gonna do these in sections. So the first two books are both by the same author, and that is The Girl Who Speaks Fair and The Castle of Tangled Magic, both by Sophie Anderson. I am obsessed with these covers. Um, I read her The House of the Chicken Legs the end of last year and I enjoyed it but it wasn't like the most amazing thing I've ever written or I've ever read but I really like the ideas. I think this one sounds the most interesting to me but I am super curious about her stories. I just her ideas fascinate me and I'm willing to give them a shot because like even though the other one wasn't my favorite it still got like three and a half stars which is a really decent rating. But yeah I wanted to get these two because I really like the illustrated UK covers. I think UK covers of children's books are absolutely stunning. They're like my favorite things. So this one, The Girl Who Speaks Bear, follows our main character, Yannicka, who um, was found as a baby in a bear cave. And not many people know that about her, but there's always whispers about her because she's very different. Not a lot of people see her as like normal. Um, and then something happens where she has to leave her home and kind of go off and discover and try to figure out who she is, where she came from. So that sounds like a fun like adventure story. I feel like the girl who speaks bear to me says she's gonna find some bears along the way and they're gonna be her friends. That's my theory. And then the Castle of Tangled Magic follows our main character, Olia, who accidentally steps through a doorway into a totally different world where there's like a evil wizard or like there's a wizard that holds all the power, a scheming wizard who holds all of the power. Um, and there's like no hope in this land. And it sounds like she's been thought as like the one who's going to save them. And so she has to kind of like protect the new family and friends that she has. So this is very like portal magic type of story. And that sounds the most interesting out of everything that Sophie Anderson has written. However, all of her books sound interesting and I'm willing to give all of them a shot. So I picked both of those up from this author. And then the next four books are all from <laughs> another author. And that is these four from Michelle Harrison. So I picked up, let's talk about this one first. I picked up this one, which is A Tangle of Spells. This is the third in her A Pinch of Magic series. I have the first two that I picked up with UK covers because I loved them. I believe only the first one is out in the US, but this one ju like just came out in the UK. Uh, yeah, 2021. So there's no way this is out in the US yet, but of course I had to get one that matched. Uh, these covers are stunning. But uh, this one I don't even know much about. I just know it's this third one in the series. And it says a pinch of magic adventure, which to me says it's the same characters, but it's not like really part of the series. I'm not quite sure. The series follows three sisters and in the first book they each are given a magical object and their family is cursed and they're trying to break the curse. And then I'm not sure what happens in the second one. And then this is the third one. So I don't know a whole lot. The synopsis on the back is very vague for all of these books. And this one says, a dangerous spell cast over an unsuspecting village, an enchanted painting locked away in a secret room, a desperate race to reverse the spell before it's too late. So like, they're always like super adventurous and fantastical and whimsical. And I absolutely loved the first one. So I had to get my hands on the third one. So obviously all of the covers could match. And then along with that, I got her entire three, 13, I can't remember which one comes first, but we have 13 curses, 13 secrets, and 13 treasures. I think 13 treasures comes first. I think it goes like this. But uh, this is a series that revolves around fairies. Sounds great. Honestly, from what I know about this series, it reminds me of the Spiderwick Chronicles series where like, it's a girl who's at her older relatives home and in doing so they have discovered this like magical world. So this is the first one, 13 treasures, and it follows, this series follows our main character named Tanya and she's got a secret. She can see fairies um, and they like cast spells on her. They wake her while she's sleeping. They take her out into the middle of the night and her mother is really worried about her. So they, she ships her off to her grandmother's estate um, where it uh, doesn't get any better. Um, but Tanya does find an old photograph of an unsolved mystery from like 50 years ago and her grandmother refuses to talk about it. So obviously she must investigate for herself. So this is the series I decided that if I was going to buy one I might as well buy all three because I'm going to want them to match anyway. And like I said it gives me very Spiderwick Chronicles vibes. So uh, I think this is going to be fantastic. I loved her writing. So now I basically I'm pretty sure I own all of her books. So. 
last one that I picked up from because I wanted the UK cover is one that like I have bought for a video project I'm planning on doing sometime during this year that I hate, like I legit hate the US cover. I cannot stand it. But the UK cover is stunning. So I went ahead and picked it up. And that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I've read one book by V.E. Schwab which is A Darker Shade of Magic and didn't particularly love it. But I've heard that this is like nothing else of hers. And it's just like I'm hoping that that is like a good thing like because I haven't enjoyed one thing and maybe this will be like my thing. But I do know it's like super slow moving. But this cover, I'll put like the US cover on here. I don't know why I don't like it. I don't mind the like black and gold. I just I think it's super boring when you have this, which is stunning. It's gold foiled. You have all of these like beautiful blue flowers. Why would you get anything else? And like the inside is super pretty and the cover is stunning. I just this book is stunning and like I don't understand why you would ever think about getting the US when you can get this one. Just saying. But I'm sure many of you have seen or heard about this book. It's like really popular right now but it follows a girl named Addie LaRue and it's like a dual perspective like or like a dual timeline because it's set in I don't remember where it begins um 300 years in the past where she's like I don't like my life. I don't want to continue to do the things that I'm doing and basically like bargains with this man to give her immortality but she is always forgotten. So no matter who she meets she's Im immediately forgotten once she leaves the room and so she lives a very like nomad life. And then one day she walks into a bookstore and the clerk rem remembers her somehow and it's I think their love story but like this has got like I've heard this is super sad because of that idea of like no one remembers you so like you don't have any roots and um I don't know I'm gonna give it a shot at some point like I said it's for a video project which is why I picked it up but I just this cover this cover is why and then I decided on a whim to pick up this one which is the third volume of Emma by Cory Mori. This is a graphic novel series that I have only, I said graphic novel, this is a manga series that I've only read the first one of but I do own the first two and I just, I'm continually picking them up because they're like super expensive. Like this one brand new was like $23 and I was like excuse me, it, no. So I found it like super cheap used. So that's what I did and uh, this one is just the, the next one in the series but it follows this girl named Emma in Victorian England or maybe Regency England um, where she is a maid in this house and a lord and her create a, a little little story but I just decided to pick up the third one because I'm really enjoying my time reading this and like I might have found a series that I love. I might have done it. My goal is to purchase all of these at some point. I think there are nine so I'm just slowly collecting them and this is just the next one. So I feel like I'm gonna want to binge this because I've read the first one like I've said and I feel like I just want to binge this series so if I collect them then I can do that. And the very last book <laughs> that I picked up is because I read Crescent City in, uh, in March and it's become like a new favorite of mine. I literally can't stop talking about it. Can you see that it's the only book that has like precedence? Is that the right word? It's like you can see the cover because I'm obsessed with this. So I picked up <laughs> Up Avatar, A Court of Thrones and Roses by Sarah J Maas because this is her fairy series and um, I'm really not interested in her Throne of Glass series but like my enjoyment of Crescent City was making me question so many things and like I might actually give that one a shot. Who am I? Um, but I'm definitely giving this one a shot because I've actually been interested in Avatar for a very long time and it's actually to me surprising that I've never read it based on what it's about because it's like a fairy romance that's like loosely based on Beauty and the Beast and oh shoot Tamlin that's the one but like if you like Crescent City by her apparently like this is your next best one because it's very like fantasy romance and I was feeling so much FOMO when the new one came out like last month so I picked up this one because it's a new cover and like while I do like the old covers all of her new books are going to be in this cover so I might as well just go with this one. Everything about this book sounds great so I'm hoping to give this one a shot at some point. Um, I'm trying to tell myself not to buy the entire series before I even started it but uh we, we know that's not going to last very long. But uh, yeah, I picked it up because 
I enjoyed Crescent City so much, and I feel like I'm going to become a huge Sarah J. Mass fan. At least when it comes to her, like, fairy and, like, urban fantasy stuff. So, uh, yep, that's, uh, I did the thing. Uh, so yeah, those are some of the books that I picked up in the month of March. I've got some pre-orders I'm really excited about. I've got some new mangas to try out. I've got a lot of, a lot of middle grade, so I need to be reading some more middle grade here. And I totally missed middle grade March, so, like, we might have to, like, do middle grade May for me or something. I don't know. But that is... Those were the books I picked up. But if you liked this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links, so don't forget to go check all of those out. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!